On 2SM and the Super Network, High Tide. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go. It is five minutes after six here on High Tide. If you're thinking of heading out today, not a bad day to do it by the looks of things. The Sydney Harbour, Pittwater, Botany Bay forecast for today. West to northwesterly, below 10 knots should be the wind. Southerly, 15 to 20 in the evening and the seas below 0.5. Offshore, not that bad either. North to northwesterly winds, 15 to 20 knots. Turning west to southwesterly, 10 to 15 knots in the late morning. Then tending southeast to southwesterly, 15 to 20 knots in the evening. Seas below uh, well, 1 to 1.5 metres, then they're going to decrease to just below 1 metre. The swell will be out of the northeast at around 1 metre. We've got a cast of thousands in here today, and this hour of the program is going to be pretty special. Now, <laughs> the reason being is <laughs> Facebook. You've got to love Facebook, don't you? I know, look, I know High Tide's an active part of Facebook, uh, but as soon as somebody says anything on Facebook, there are 3,000 people ready to throw stones at them. And you, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Reedy? Yeah. The interesting thing was there was a post put up. Um, I actually think it was posted uh, last week. I live week. in a glass house. That's why I don't throw them. I, well, that, yeah. you're, you're smart like me. I now avoid it. But I actually got a little bit upset with some posts that I saw. The local member for the Swansea area, the Honourable um, Yasmin uh, Catley, said that dredging was starting in the Swansea Channel. And on it came. I'll see it when I believe it. She talks the talk. Can she walk the walk? Blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know a great deal about dredging, but I did have a chat to Alan Blake, who's still with us online with Kieran Reiki. And Alan said, no, mate, you just don't say, well, here's the money that costs to do the dredging. Let's start tomorrow. Just get the boys down there and we'll start digging it up. There's a lot more to it. But for all the sceptics out there at Lake Macquarie, the Swansea Channel is going to be dredged. And I know this because Yasmin has very kindly joined us in the studio at ungodly hours after a, an enormous week with Parliament sitting. Good morning to you. Good morning, Grant. How are you doing? We are we are legit. It's going to happen, and it's going to happen sooner rather than later. Tell us about it. Look, it absolutely is. Um, you know, I've been seeking dredging for the channel now for some years. The previous government had identified the Swansea Channel as a priority area because, quite simply, vessels just don't have the confidence to come in and we've got some vessels that have come in and can't get out so you know it's just shocking so um, one of the first things I said I'd do if Labor won government was to ensure that the dredging gets done at Swansea Channel that's exactly what I've done said about doing that working with the Transport Minister Joe Halen and dredging is starting next week um, the dredge is actually being assembled over at Rathmines mm -hmm. as we speak um, they've cornered off the area where they're going to be putting some of the um, infrastructure that they require to get the dredging done at Swan Bay um, and that's at Nauru and locals will know exactly where I'm talking about um, and it's really exciting that it's happening and I'm hopeful that, um, well, not hopeful, I know that by Christmas uh, we'll certainly have vessels having confidence to come back into the channel again, knowing that they can once again float around the most beautiful lake in the world, Lake Macquarie. I wanted to ask what, what your, your passion is with getting all of this done. Now, I know your father worked, um, you know, as a seafarer, and I know your husband was heavily involved in that area as well, but why do you think it's so important to get this done? Um, I actually grew up on Lake Macquarie. I learned to swim on Lake Macquarie. You're so a trickly girl, aren't you? No, Gwondolin, Gwondolin. Summerland Point, okay, Gwondolin, cool. yeah. So um, it's um, it's been part of my life, all of my life, and it's just, you know, it's such a beautiful waterway. Um, you know, if, if I had another career, it would be a fisherman, that's for sure. I'd just be out fishing all the time. <laughs> you I'd don't want to like... do that. It wasn't a good way to make a living for me. <laughs> it's a great office, but poor, poor wages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, yeah, just so long as I'm self-sufficient, cook a few fish for dinner, that'd do me. <laughs> But, you know, it's um, it, people choose to live there because of the lifestyle. Mm. And um, to be able to share that with others when they come past on their boats is also, you know, something that we must do. And not having confidence to come in and out the channel is just nuts. So, uh, it's, for me, anyway, um, if we don't have navigable waterways, then what the bloody hell are we doing? Mm. And Can and you it, move up to the Mid-North Coast and get Crowdy <laughs> Harbour sorted out and foster? And in recent times, it's, um, it's put pressure on marine rescue who every 
anybody will read. How bad is it today? Mm. Can I get in? What's the story? And and they've been, uh, rightly or wrongly, operating as more or less pilot boat operators for so many boats coming in, which is adding extra burden to their daily chores as well. Oh, 100%. Um, it's the busiest marine rescue in the state, actually, Lake Macquarie. I was with them just last weekend, and they were doing one of their um, emergency rescue exercises. So we had, um, I was up at the, the radio tower at Swansea Heads, and they had um, uh, police rescue there. They had uh, surf life saving, uh, marine rescue, and the helicopter rescue. It was am- amazing to watch. But you're so right, and you know it's really um, asking a lot of them to have to pull boats over onto their side and pull them across the shoaled area of the channel where their keels have re- mm. have gotten stuck. And it's just not on. It's dangerous for everybody, and um, you know th- their frustration is extraordinary. So uh, when I announced to them on Saturday that it was getting started, there was big tears. So it was great. So it's good to work with them. And can I say, this is a community effort. You know, I'm the representative. I'm the one who, you know, gets to announce these things. But at the end of the day, this is a community effort. And all of the yacht clubs have been amazing, the sailing clubs um, and also the, all our local fishing um, outlets as well. So it's been extraordinary. Now, because it was an election promise, it would be very easy for you to become a fly-by-night to do the one dredging and all over Red Rover. But you actually have a long-term strategic plan for this. So what... I know that you've got two dredges in the next uh, within the next twelve months or the next six months to be more precise. What is your long term view for the Lake Macquarie area? Okay, so um, you're quite right. We're going to have. Uh, the two dredging programs on, on this particular round. So there'll be 15,000 cubic metres removed um, imminently and then we'll do another 15,000 in um, about uh, six months' time, in uh, wow. mid-next year. Um, so... Ongoing, though, um, MIDO, which is the uh, Maritime Infrastructure Delivery Organisation, which is part of Transport for New South Wales, uh, are putting in place a 10-year dredging program, and that's for the whole of the state. Now, this is really super good news because it will mean that we will have a reactive response, sorry, a proactive response instead of a reactive response. So when uh, around waterways, the the depths get Mm. to certain um, depths, the channels get to certain depths, that will be the trigger point for them to bring in maintenance dredging get that done um, in advance of actually getting to the point where it's all shoaled up, um, it's costing so much more money. So this new way of thinking will actually be economic good sense no, as well. It's a refreshing change. Yeah, that's, that's a Can I have a fun question without notice? Go for it. Because the surfing community is really big, obviously on the coast as well. Yeah. Mm. Is there any way with this that we could look at implementing like a, a, a Gold Coast Superbank style of sand implementation <laughs> oh, yeah. around the break wall at, at Blacksmiths because that would create an amazingly long right, right hand yeah. and I'd travel there to surf it. <laughs> so, oh, this is like Dix's, these questions. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually thought it was door stoppers. No, yeah. Because it's... Greg sails as well as I do. Yeah. And, you know, I'm t- like, I only run 1.2, so I'm not that bad. And you're going down yeah. to three metres, I, I believe, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, that sort of thing. I thought you were going to go with the sailing question. but no, no. I just look at the Gold Coast yeah. Superbank yeah. and there's a kilometre long right hander yeah. there and, and the surfing but community's so strong right up and down the coast there's a lot call. of interest into it. It's fair the to... The spoil's got to go somewhere. It's well. fair call too, Greg, because the, the beaches up there are, are amazing and they're, he got there midweek in the middle of summer. There's nobody yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Shh. <laughs> no, no, That's how I feel about yeah. Newcastle. Well, well, see, we we look at it from another way. Like we, we look at what registrations we've been paying on our boats, and you know, a certain amount of our registration goes into supporting marine rescue and things like that. And and we've got a particular issue there at Foster where a charter business, Amaru Charters, had to sell because they couldn't get their boat out through COVID for a couple of years and then um, it, it, it just didn't get done. They couldn't get their boat out to do the whale watching and that's so they've recently sold the Amaru. Um, and, and you mentioned uh, rightly too that the oyster farmers in the Breckenridge Channel are getting a silta- siltation issue. Crowdy Boat Harbour, uh, we've got a four-lane boat ramp and only one suitable for boats over five metres on a lowish tide because it's too shallow and the sand comes in. Sand's a migratory thing on the ocean and in river entrances, the bars. And, there's, and I'm glad you said there's a 10-year plan because that's looking towards a vision that says, all right, we know the sand moves and it's got to be addressed regularly. So, yeah, congratulations on you getting that installed. Yeah, there's got to be a vision with just it. Just clone yourself and get up the mid-north coast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can I just go back to Greg's point about blacksmiths because I have got some good news there as well. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So 
um, several years ago uh, when we had one of the um, dredging programs, there was a pipeline put in and it went across from Nauru, across to just in front of the golf course at Belmont and the sand was transferred over there and it was really successful. Um, the then owner of that infrastructure asked the government if they wanted to buy it and they declined to do that, which was just really short-sighted. Um, more recently, we've had a couple of... Um, uh, programs, dredging programs where we've trucked the sand over to blacksmiths and that too has been really successful in looking, uh, helping with the coastal erosion. So the plan is now um, on this particular dredging program like as we speak, it's going to go on to Elizabeth Island which is not ideal at all because that's you know, just trickling back into the channel and, yeah, yeah. you know, creating the problem in itself. But the next one, um, I've asked Maritime if we can absolutely look at trucking it over in this instance. So next year we'll truck the sand over. And going forward, though, we hope to be able to have the infrastructure put back in through the help of the federal government and also the local council. So that's exactly what we're looking at. So get your surfboard waxed up. Get it ready, mate. <laughs> He's permanently because, waxed. Because the Superbank is yeah. coming <laughs> our way. It, it'd be amazing if we create a super bank style and it ties into the spoils got to go somewhere we're looking at sand yeah. replenishment then onto the beaches as well so there's a you use yeah, it we've to got to go down this road there's, Spot yeah, on. it's it a win-win you know it's yeah. dredging the um, channel and having that navigable and addressing coastal erosion yeah. over on the beach so you're right yeah. it's just a win-win yeah alan blake can i order a couple of uh, surfboard racks for my yacht please <laughs> Not a problem at all. Not See, a problem. Let's take it's money good to hear, and yes, and thank you for all that work because uh, a lot of people don't realise it does take many years to get all the approvals in place to get the dredging done. Ah, uh, no worries, Alan. I'm a very patient woman. Talk us through the process. What you, so you decide, okay, you won the election, you, you're committed to it now. Where do you start? How long does it take to get to the stage where next week is about to happen? Oh, look. Um, Obviously, I'd been agitating for a very, very long time to get it done. And you can't have you know, major waterways uh, unnavigable. It's ridiculous. Mm. And, you know, I knew that the work would have been getting done in the background. I mean, public service still, you know, the wheels still keep turning regardless of who's in government. Mm. And I knew that they would have been working on it. So it's just a matter of, you know, knocking on the minister's door and saying, hey, <clears throat> We've got to get this done. You know, it's absolutely a priority. And can I say, Transport for New South Wales, their maritime arm, they were excellent. They they knew too. They knew that it had to be done. They just needed a bit of a bit of a shove along. So they got. They a... need more than a shove. <laughs> oh come on! No, they actually go. They don't go too bad. Yeah, Hutcho yeah, will yeah, be ringing up yeah. soon. Saying, what's going on here? Yeah. Oh, well, big shout out to Hutcho. I tell you, he's a big supporter in in this. And um, well, he's got a good background from uh, being in the water police too. You know? Well, so that's right. Been... Fisherman on high tide too. <laughs> True. True. Yeah, Yasmin, you managed to get down to the boat show yesterday. I saw you down there yesterday morning. You, you, uh, I remember from your you know, first uh, speech in Parliament, you were very solid about uh, women becoming actively involved, particularly within the union movement um, and some of the, the women that have been trailblazers in that area. You would have been, I, I would assume, you would have been very excited to see so many mega stars are females that have been involved in the boating industry whether they're they're rowers sailors etc uh, being put up on pedestals at places like the, the boat show now to, to share their experiences and encourage other people to to follow in their footsteps a hundred percent it was great hearing some of those stories yesterday actually but i just think that um you know we, we need to keep encouraging young women uh, into uh, boating and and the sport of boating as well like obviously you know i refer to sailing and what have you and fishing for that matter um it was funny um i was having a chat to darren who was from the um international um i forget the the acronym now but you know who i'm talking about yeah. and um he was saying that there's like i think um 90 percent of uh, licenses in new south wales are males and i said well i'm doing my best to increase that i have three daughters so i said there's four women in my house with a boat license so but it is important you know i mean being on the water is good for your soul mm. and I just think yep. I just encourage anybody just get involved like I just I, I love it obviously um, that's where I live that's where I play and I just think that it's really important that we get everyone involved it's not a boys sport it's not a, a well, you know, from it. Oh, from it. love it yeah. no yeah. it's for everybody so what do you normally take uh, well I usually uh, brim uh, what I mostly get and flathead 
And what, what sort of rig do you use? Bear in mind that PJ is the king of the, and and Greg they're the kings of this sort of stuff. So, right. like, what do you what what rig do you usually run? So I'm really old fashioned. <laughs> um, don't you forget, said there'd I be grew... no hard questions, didn't I? Oh, that's not a hard question for me. Go I'm ahead. really old fashioned. So my um, don't forget, I grew up in Summerland Point. So it used to be a cork um, with a line and a sinker and a hook. But I've moved up now to I've got a, a just an easy light rod, and I always use fresh prawns. I liked the bit Can't when you it. said a cork. That got me. Yeah. They had me at cork. The <laughs> hand line. That's how we learned to fish for brim on a hand line. Yeah, 100%. And we used to have a bucket with water. And save the cork running on the bottom of the yeah. boat making a noise, it used to throw water spray up. And we said, oh, there's a brim on that one. <laughs> well, we weren't that sophisticated in my um, neck of the woods, let me tell you. But nonetheless, my daughter actually recently, my husband's out, you know, and he's obsessed with different tackle for different this and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Takes most of his time he spends re-tackling. Anyway, she's got so frustrated with him. She said, oh, I'm just getting my hand lined out. And off she went and she caught, you know, about a 50, no, oh, well, 60, I think, centimetre um, flatty. Oh, nice so, fish, And he's, yeah. uh, he was still putting his, you know, third, fourth, fifth hook on. <laughs> well, I, I talk about using hand lines in my talk for snapper because I still love I, it's it's raw, you know, it's direct, it's um, you know, and you get a feel you and get a feel say, for it. Start the kids fishing with a hand line. That's mm. the basic principle, and then progress them to a rod and reel. We're going to take a break here on High Tide at 21 minutes after six. Yasmin, yes, you're going to hang around with us for a little bit. Happy to, oh, if you want me. Wonderful. <laughs> we'll be back with more on the other side of this time now to catch up with Swanee, and we'll do that in just a moment. This is 2SM. Talking sport. It's good when you win, but you can't win without having a loser. Exactly. Mm. Dennis, I've said that to Pappy and Graham in the lift numerous nights, right? Like, yeah, they're great, and they're perfect at a lot of things but like you know what, what if there wasn't someone like me who's a little bit dumb gets many things wrong etc you know the, the balance of what we bring is what we like, if there wasn't anyone like you if we, we well, become, we'd, we'd be professional we become even weekdays from three we can still win it without Sammy Kerr nice very good very good <laughs> yeah, good stuff uh, I'm glad you, you may start singing to a big crowd but I promise by the time you finish that won't be. Oh, come on. Happy has never tried to sing a word in his life. Not in public, I don't. No, no absolutely not. So you just back yourself, yeah, Len. This is 2SM. Talking sport. Weekdays from 3. Brain tumour. Migraine. Dementia. Concussion. Have you Dyslexia. or someone you love MSA. been touched by a brain disorder, disease or injury? Motor neurone disease. Stroke. Epilepsy, Alzheimer's. There can be no cure Dystonia, without research. Parkinson's. Help the ones you love by donating to research today. Visit brainfoundation.org.au or call 1300 double eight triple six zero. Pick a battle in mini money more and flower. You're the chosen one. Pick your favorite Kia. From the award-winning Kia Sportage to the street cred delivering Kia Seltos or Kia's most powerful car ever, the all-electric EV6 GT. Book a test drive today to find your chosen one. Find out more at kia.com.au or drop into your nearest Kia dealer. Kia, movement that inspires. Recently retired and want to give back to the community? Looking to contribute to a worthwhile cause? Join View Clubs of Australia, a friendly women's network in your local community. View supports the Smith family to help Australian children in need break the cycle of poverty. Become a member today. Call 1800 805 366 or go to view.org.au. Are you building a new home? Well, there's a more affordable way with a PAL kit home australia's most experienced and trusted kit home supplier for more than 50 years you can become an owner builder and manage the building of your own home pal guarantee that you can do it even without prior building experience find out how you can build your very own home go to pal that's p w l kithomes.com.au or you can phone them on 1-800-024-912 this is 2SM, Sydney. 
more of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could it is 24 go. minutes after 6 o'clock here on High Tide. Time now to head north of the Queensland border up around Kiran Riki. In fact, <laughs> his next door neighbour. Swanee, good morning to you. How are you? Uh, good morning. How are you, Grab? Not too bad. Not too bad. We've got a cast of thousands in our boat show I'm special just today. Say, crowded house. A crowded good house. Morning, Swanee. <laughs> good morning for a band. <laughs> How are you? How are you, Pete? Uh, good day. Good day, Jasmine. Good day, mate. Hi. How are you? Good. Thanks. Hey, yeah. Yeah. PJ. Yeah. You were talking about that hot hole in the night time puddling or whatever you call it. Brought back some memories. Maitland Bay. Before they turned it into a marine reserve, a mate and I, in the winter, round the dark of the moon when the Wesleys blew, flattened the sea out, we used to take the boat round and pull it up on the beach there on the northern end of Maitland Bay, and uh, near the, the old boilers from the Maitland wrecks back in the early 60s, and we'd uh, fish the rising tide there, the big tide, the same sort of method, mate, with the bread, we'd have bread in a, uh, um, in a bag, so sort of an onion bag tethered to the rock, washing around, new shell prawn and some of the drummer and and, uh, and brim we used to pull out of two foot of water and amaze people, I'll tell you. Well, a, a lot of that's now all part of um, uh, Budai Beach National Park. Yeah. And so a lot of those uh, lower rock platforms, you, you, you can't fish. But places like Winnie Bay and all that, you can fish up there pretty well. Much the same method. But I think that puddle holing, you know, like fishing those shallow rock pools like that at night, um, a nice, you know, you can get away with an eight-foot rod if you want to. I still use a 4144 and 12-pound line on that on a six-inch hour. And, geez, it's, it's, it's hand-to-hand -hand combat sometimes in that shallow water with those big drummer. <laughs> yeah. Mate, I, uh, that mate, Donnie Hughes, he, he, we were fishing off the high rock there in, in the corner and uh, he's hit a big pig and, and uh, he's really laid into it and, and the line is broken. He's broken him off and the rod come back and the feral hit me fair between the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would hurt too. Uh, the other place up there, Pete, was um, uh, we used to go fishing for Jew at Box Head and uh, some there on a, on just an eastern face of Box Head used to get some nice drummer there on a low shelf. Mate, yeah, well, I saw a Eddinghausen episode there a while back when they, they were around the corner when the seas are flat there and they were put, casting... Uh, into the rocks, so I would just felt um, uh, more dried in place and pulling big things. But we used to take the little 12 foot uh, punt out and uh, just inside Little Box Head and, and pull it up onto the rocks, uh, three or four of us, and, and uh, we'd fish off the rocks there, uh, off Little Box itself uh, on the early morning rising tide. Uh, the jackets, leather jackets, and things we pulled out of there over the years, mate, were the most people, I'll tell you. Uh, oh, no. I know exactly where you'd pull the boat up because Dad and Tiger Carnamola used to take us in there the same place, you know, do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Memories, mate, memories, good memories. Yeah, and then someone come along and said it's a uh, Maitland Bay's where the whales stop over uh, on their resting on their way north. All the years I fished there over 20 or 30 years, I never saw a whale, mate, but anyhow. <laughs> never mind. Never mind, that's another story. Yeah, and look, the weather's been pretty ordinary this week. After we had four or five days of absolute magic weather with a big high over it, light and variable winds, and you could just about fish anywhere from here to New Zealand. But um, uh, this weekend, not so good. You've got uh, southeast is uh, 15 to 20, gusting up to 30. Uh, choppy seas, one, two metres, one to two metres. Um, yeah, definitely, yeah. I wouldn't do it uh, for the outside boys, but it's a shame because uh, uh, the fishing been pretty good, especially off uh, off Noosa. I noticed there a fellow uh, they fished Noosa wide, and he got a couple of three, actually three really big uh, big red emperor. So uh, yeah, that was good. I had photos of it come up on the on the phone just a while ago, actually. Um, but the beaches have been fishing well, Pedro. You know, uh, on that super moon. Uh, Moffat Beach near the rocks there. One bloke got 30 brim there over a two night period up to a kilo. In the uh, night time. That's yeah, why you don't catch them during the day on the full moon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Daytime fishing on the full moon is very hard. Well, that's what we say. We've, you and me have had this discussion about snapper. Mate, if you've got a daytime moon, you won't see a snapper there. No. Yeah. no. Uh, 
anyhow, uh, yeah, the, so the beaches are fishing pretty good at the moment. There's still a few tailors hanging around. Uh, I haven't heard any reports from Fraser Island, but uh, I'd say they'd be getting into the tailor up there. The river's been a bit quiet too. They have, around the Cod Hole, they're getting uh, on soft plastic. The young fellows have been out there uh, knocking over a few trevally, uh, just the odd jewfish. Uh, crabs have gone a bit quiet. I've got a couple right on the full moon. Uh, was it Tuesday night? I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. Night. I can't remember how I, I put it in. I thought I'd get a, uh, get a couple of crabs if I could for curing. Well, I managed to get a couple of crabs, but not enough to break up and, uh, and throw on the, on the table. So I turned them into So the you kept, you kept them for you. what you kept them for yourself and didn't give any to Kieran? No, no, uh, we had, I gave him, a, he actually came <laughs> and watched football last night after I was slaving in the kitchen all day and he said, I'm not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, no. I'd just, I'd make a bull out of the shells and just get a fan and blow the smell onto his uh, unit next door and then just, you know, like just tease him with it. Uh, yeah, well actually I used the shells, the prawns, well, there's prawns and crabs in it, so I used the shells and the pr- and my prawns and the crab. And I boil it up to make the stock for it. So, uh, you know, when you make a potato, you got to have good stock. It's the bloke on TV. <laughs> it's essential. Yeah. yeah Grant, anyway. Grant, forget, yeah, for, for business, I was about talking for food at this time oh, of just, morning. It, it's yeah. got to be banned. We're stuck in a studio. We yeah. can't eat. I'm just about to get up and have steak and eat for oh. breakfast. Oh. <laughs> Turn it up. Yeah. Any man, any, any man with a bowl full of... Uh, whether, he might have had it while he was watching the second game last night. I don't know. Did you, Kieran? Or are you going to have No, no, no. We've got it for lunch today. <laughs> oh, for lunch. Okay, mate. Yeah, well, we've got leftovers for lunch, too. Uh, seafood, seafood risotto. Leftovers. <laughs> All right, then, fellas. Yeah, generally, that's about it. There's... Uh, um, you know, it's, it's what it is. It's blown. It's blown. It has been since last Tuesday, and it looks like it's going to continue as long as those big guys down in the tavern, uh, uh, down in the Tasman, are forcing the uh, the southeasters uh, up this way. And it'll be, you know, 15, 20, 30 knots. So not much offshore fishing, uh, which is a shame because uh, uh, anyhow, it might be a good idea. You can't fish for uh, snapper or or pearlies at the moment, so uh, well you can, but don't get caught. Good time, good time to get into the estuary with a little little bit of light tackle in. Yeah, yeah. There's, well, there's still plenty of brim inside too. That uh, down around the mouth, the black bags, and down along that gutter that I talk about continuously on the northern side of Channel Island. There, uh, uh, run out tide's usually good there, but. Uh, uh, you know, just a strip bait. And, uh, like so, the water get, is getting a bit clear up here too. Uh, probably the last few hours of the run out, but then you get a bit of colour in the water, a uh, bit of mullet gut, a bit of smelly bait when, when you when you lose the colour in the water, get the smelly baits going. But uh, you'll get a feed of brim, no drop, no worries there. Just the odd flathead too up the creek, uh, hard bodied lures. Uh, you can either troll them or or soft plastic and throw in along the mangroves. Just the odd flathead still kicking around I there. Can't, I can't not mention the pro lure clone prawn. Yeah, yeah that's the guy. <laughs> Come on, that's the best segue I've had all morning. I, I'm, yeah. thinking, I'm thinking... And, and, and it works. It's actually as good as bait too. So. You may not want to be fishing the estuary for too much longer because <laughs> when Kieran gets out there on his jet ski, it's going to be... <laughs> <more obvious. laughs> we have to leave it there, Swanee. Thank you so much for your time. No worries. Don't you next week. <laughs> <laughs> that has been the Alan Jets. Speaking of Sudleys, too, for everyone down south, looks like the Sudleys gone Coming through Montague at about mm-hmm. 20 past six at about 15 knots at the moment. Yeah. But that should be on its way. So on its way. Yeah. It is uh, 27 minutes away from seven. We're going to take a break and be back with Mr. Burt, who is uh, hosting on main stage at the uh, boat show. Well, he's not at the moment. He's on the Gold Coast. He's about to step on a plane, but we'll find out more in a moment. Trying to get to footy training on time. Leaving early to avoid peak hour traffic. Grabbing those last minute ingredients for tonight's dinner. Do it safely and with confidence on Maxxis tyres. Designed and built for delivering performance when you want it and safety when you need it. Maxxis tyres deliver great value without compromising on safety. Maxxis tyres. Find out more today at maxxistires.com.au. That's M-A-X-X-I-S. Maxxistires.com.au. 
The world needs natural resources to build and power our future. For 25 years, Glencore has mined the coal, metals and minerals that advance everyday life, that power our homes and businesses and are used in almost everything around us, from electric cars to smartphones and smart homes. Making Glencore one of the world's largest mining companies you've probably never heard of. For more, visit glencore.com.au. Glencore. Advancing everyday life. After the big game, every sports fan deserves to kick back and relax. And what better way to do that than with a mattress from OMF? Get ready to unwind in style with the ultimate in comfort and relaxation. So, what are you waiting for? Head on over to OMF and check out their game-changing range of mattresses. Shop online or at over 50 locations nationwide, 100% Australian designed and owned. Where comfort meets sport. We've all heard it. Washing your dishes by hand saves water. It's a myth. That's why Whirlpool designs innovative kitchen appliances with the environment in mind. Featuring patented Sixth Sense technology, Whirlpool dishwashers save up to 50% on energy and can clean a family-sized load with just a fraction of the water you'd use in the sink. So, have you got a Whirlpool? Visit whirlpool.com.au to find a stockist near you. Relax and unwind before you take off when you stay overnight at Ridges Gold Coast Airport Hotel. Located just a minute's walk to the terminal and a five-minute stroll to the beach, Ridges Gold Coast Airport Hotel is your perfect home away from home. Enjoy a sundowner and meal at Ridges Rooftop Bar with views along the Gold Coast beaches and the hinterland. Visit ridges.com or you can call... Zero seven five six one nine eight one nine eight. Sustained performance in league is more than just one great game. It's about playing consistently game after game, season after season. Host Plus has delivered strong performance over the long term with top returns over 20 years. A top performing super fund over the long term, that's a plus. Issued by Host Plus PTY Limited. Super ratings SR50 Balance Index January 2023. General advice only. Consider the relevant Host Plus PDS and T&D at hostplus.com.au. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Search compare Host Plus today. 2SM has Sydney talking. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go. It is 23 minutes away from the hour of 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock we'll update the Super Network news for you. We're just standing by for Mr. Paul Burt. <laughs> He needs another five minutes before he can... Jo- Are you surprised by this, PJ? Not in the least. Not in the least? Mm. I like Bertie. I get on really well with him. And, you know, like, we're probably brothers from another mother. Um, when the two of us get together, both Alyssa and Linda sit there and go, oh, my God, what are they going to get up to? But, you know, like, when he says, I'll ring you back, yeah, in the next week or something <laughs> like that. And, you know, you know full well, he's got his own television show, right, called Step Outside, mm. but... But the, the truth of the matter is, his wife has her own television show. He just hosts it. <laughs> yeah, we worked that out on yeah, Thursday morning, didn't point. we? Yep. Every time you yep. hop on YouTube or Facebook and you talk, you know you're not talking to Bertie. Well, I was talking to Alyssa there the other morning because Greg and I She's were both down there doing, you know, some pointers and tips and all that. Best job in the world. All he's got to do is just stand there and talk and go fishing. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> she just, said, I do all the work behind the scenes. He's just got to stand here in front of the mm, camera and talk. She's a and good then, editor too. She's she flat. does an amazing yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. Shows are really, really good. What do you got planned for today, Blakey, out at the boat show? Anything uh, out of the normal? No, just talking to customers and uh, seeing what everyone wants for their boating needs. It'll keep us out of the Yes. Can you just give us a, a revamp on the Stacer deals, please? Well, look, Stacer's got uh, up to $2,000 back on the trailers. So it's basically a discount on, on a boat motor trailer package. Uh, that's on the bigger six metre boats, uh, back to about a thousand dollars on some of the smaller boats. Uh, plus, um, we've got uh, eight different stations there to look at, from side consoles to cabin boats to bow riders to runabouts. Uh, it's, it's worth the effort to come in and have a look at them, compare them, uh, some of their features and benefits, and I think you'll be fairly impressed with them. Well, if I haven't been able to get a ticket to get to the boat show, what about at home? Yeah, there's still. 40 odd stations back at the dealership in the in the showroom, so there's plenty there as well. But, um, Similar deal. Staffs. 
the staff see that they look after you if you want from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Kieran, can you stop asking him about the Stacey deal and just buy one off him, for goodness sake? <laughs> I've got to ask him, and I've got to also get you blakes to tell us how much it'll cost me to get into the boat show. $27. Oh, I thought it was 25. Who put it up? You tax it. I always tax it. I always... I tell you who might know. Paul Burt. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing, guys? Not t- but more importantly, how are you how doing? How are you yeah. doing? How are you <laughs> doing? Okay. I'm doing okay. You know how it is. It's one of those days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, listen, you can hear all the clunking in the background, right? You know, yeah. you know he's under the pump trying to get to the airport, yeah. trying to get out of the car or check in. Is, am I right or right? Mate, we're uh, we're in the car. We're in the car. We had to, uh, you know, get get ourselves all good. Hey, uh, what a great day! What a great day for the boat show in wonderful Sydney. A fantastic start to the day in Sydney, guys. It's going to be a beautiful day. Look, a little bit of show activity. Don't worry about that. You know, the way I look at it, even when you're out on the marina, it's a hundred percent undercover when you're under an umbrella. So if you go into the show, go and have a look, go and check it out and come on down to the main Suzuki Suzuma fishing stage with all our team. And uh, and it's going to be great. A fantastic day. PJ, you've been there the last couple of days too, mate. Oh, mate, look, I enjoy coming back to Sydney. This, this like... I don't enjoy coming to Sydney, but I enjoy coming to Sydney to come <laughs> come do the boat show. show. Yeah, like yeah. you know, like I spent a lot of money to escape Sydney, and now I'm coming back to it. But as we say, I come back to do the networking and 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 to um, put our knowledge into people's heads so they can enjoy their fishing the way we have over the last four decades. A hundred percent, mate, and that's what it's all about. You know, uh, just share, sharing our you know, the knowledge of simple things to not so simple things. Um, you know, things that we take. I'm not really for granted, but the information that we've gathered and gained and sharing that passion and information to people who are starting out, maybe they want to try, for example, snapper fishing. You know, they want, they're thinking, okay, I've got a boat. I'm going to head offshore and I'm going, to cro- I'm going to try for snapper because there was one time in our life when you said the same thing to yourself and I said the same thing to myself. I want to go and catch a snapper. And there is that time when it comes for, for the new guys out there who want to do it. And this is the perfect platform for them to come. And it's the same with experienced guys who go, I want to go out and I want to try this new craze of, of deep dropping. You know, I want to go out and try fishing this untouched, unfound waters of, of you know, two, three, four hundred metres deep. And I want to try and work this out and, and see how I can do it. And, and that's the thing is that we're, we're sharing that knowledge to help people. Um, further their experience of, uh, of fishing in general. Well, hang on, I think that's Paul. a fantastic thing. Hey, Paul, you didn't tell everyone that wants to fish that deep they better take an electric reel with them. Well, you know, that, that helps. It does help. The, uh, the, the Shimano Beastmaster and Forcemaster 9000s, they're a fantastic reel, a fantastic reel, which is awesome. But there's also a new one that's coming out on the market from, uh, from Wilson. Uh, and that one there is uh, due to hit the shops in, uh, in at Christmas time. So, yeah, there's a lot of different... Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the affordability is, you know, cheaper than a game fishing reel. Uh, and you can do it, you know. It's a, it's a good thing. But, mate, I do... I used to, when I first deep dropped there, kids, I, I was using the LV Reef Queen and the LV Reef yep. and, that, and That's how we all did it, Paul. Yep. Mate, <laughs> yeah, we... We didn't have, uh, you know, ele- well, they were electric reels around. I think those days it was still um, telecoms, but they, uh, you know, they, they they now turn around and go, right, well, uh, you know, let's make it affordable because technology is getting cheaper and cheaper for people. Um, let, let's work it out. So they've done it. Come a long way from the cork. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, yes. Yeah, not, not P- bad, not bad. PB Yasmin is in here to- uh, today as well, so. Oh, good. Just co-host. Oh, good. Lovely. And I got a bit of big, big, a big, big, um, big, big shout out, a massive shout out to Worth. I think the Worth, and people wondering what that is, it's women in recreational fishing. Um, I, I think you know, I know at the uh, the trade show, the tackle show up there on the Gold Coast, um, you know, there are a lot of women walking around in the in the trade stores and having a look at all the fishing gear. And I, I think it's awesome. There's so many, you know, fishing competitions and clubs out there that uh, really, you know, embracing the you know, people wanting to go fishing and women wanting to get into fishing as well. And, uh, yeah, I think it's cool. It's it's awesome to see. It's really good. So, uh, yeah, to all the women in recreational fishing out there, I hope you're catching a big one today, whatever you're doing anyway. Yeah, Couldn't it's agree more. not just a bloke sport, that's for sure, Bertie. Yeah, absolutely, 100%, mate, it's for everybody. And that's what I was saying with electric reel fishing. You know, I've been doing my talks down there at the, the boat, obviously, and, 
you know, there's people out there who, uh, you know, might have a, a prosthetic hand or whatever like that, or maybe they just, their elbow's bung, they've got tennis elbow, or whatever. Mm. Whatever it might be, it doesn't matter. Is that you can still, you can still wet a line. You, you know what I find best thing about the boat show? About doing the talks that we do? Is when we give a talk last year and someone comes up this year or or the year after and say, hey, I listened to what you said at the boat show last year. I went out and did what you did, and it really improved. And for me, that's the best uh, reward this, you're this, ever going to get out of fishing. It's actually the really good thing about the boat show is like you can actually connect with people at the coalface. Mm. Okay, mm. let me know how you go. And then getting that feedback, and then we're all actually benefiting off that feedback. But, is that uh, you, Greggy? That is me, mate. How are you? Hey, how are you, mate? Like, good, <laughs> mate. Good for 6 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Jeez. But it, it, it is good. It is good to get that feedback and that continual feedback throughout the whole evolution of what what we're doing as well, and see people get some genuine stoke off that. That's well, that's it drives us thing. too. Yeah. It it, it, yeah. it drives us to do better than what we're doing. You look like with Greggy with his you know skinny water fishing for flatties and all that stuff on Pro Lure. Like you know, it, it's just one of those things that. You're not going to catch a flathead all the time, but shit, you might get a, a, a you might get a brim, you might get something else. It's, you know, you might get a tailor swimming through. So, just having all of that information and knowledge, you know, that's imparted to catch that species can be used across the board on so many other fish. And even you know what, I learned something because you know I, I don't protest myself to be a, a, a guru or anything like that. God no, but I learned something from Greg this week, and that he's running like. Nine foot six, ten foot six rods, rods that I'd use for you know whiting and all that sort of stuff. That length anyway in the in a boat, uh, or off a light surf rod. And uh, but he's using the ten foot six rods with a little twenty five hundred reel on it, and he's flicking these, you know, his his pro lure, the big the big lures out there for flatties, and and flicking in a country mile, but having the light nice lightness of a rod. Like I've never done that. I'm always thinking, well, if I'm going for flatties, I'll stick to like maybe a seven oh two tops. But you know, so I, I'm I'm I, I'm excited to go out there and try this style of fishing and hey, doing it with Greg. How hey, cool Paul. Is that? Assuming that the flight's on time, what time can we see you on stage at the boat show today? Mate, just come on down ten thirty. The show starts at ten o'clock. It runs through till uh, you know seven tonight. So look, just do yourselves a uh, come on down and you know, regardless of of what time I'm on, I don't know. Uh, but you know, that's what I'm trying to allude to. But just come and see all the guys on because uh, some ten thirty the, uh, the the stage show is uh, is live. Sounds like your Mr. flight Bert. might be delayed. Hey, Mr. Bert. Yes, mate. Hey, so, a, a rumor tells me that you've got a special guest on from Shimano. We do today. Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm be actually sitting down with the with the one and only uh, Andrew Eddinghouse and ET. So I'm sitting down with him and having a a bit of a chin wag. And um, you know, it's really cool because that'd be a good yarn. That yeah, yeah. I'd pay money to watch yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I have. <laughs> We're um. So you're going through, you're going through <laughs> check out. That's what yeah, you're that's it, yeah. <laughs> Hey, just get just get back here. We've got to go. We've got to go. But we'll just get back real. here because we're doing wing boys tonight. All right. Yeah. Yep. It's gloves on, mate. Gloves on. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> wing boys and beer. Wing boys and beer tonight. <laughs> that's it. Don't forget to check check out Step Outside on the <laughs> Seven app. Time to head off to Matt from Salamander Bait and Tackle. Good morning, Matt. How are you? Well, it's happy Saturday. It sounds like there's uh, not enough room to swing a cat in that studio. By the sound Good morning, of it. Matt. How's your crank of crabs and yeah, your crank of crabs? It has to be crabs. a small cat. <laughs> <laughs> there's about uh, three of those left. Um, what are you no, doing, Phil? No, look, and what a great weather day it is, I think. We've suddenly changed forecast tomorrow, but I don't know about you guys down there, but then yesterday up here, you wouldn't think it was August. It was like 25 degrees. Mm. Sun was out. Today's a good day. You've got slight winds. The seas are slight. Um, <clears throat> Good conditions all in all. Um, and if you want to have a crack tomorrow, you'll probably be just restricted to the bay. That suddenly changes. It's meant to come through early. Um, plenty of brim and blackfish off the bay floor. More blackfish than the, the brim, of course. Um, they're getting some nice brim off the beaches down at Baruby down there. And Scully, old Scully, nailed himself a 22 kilo jewfish as a bycatch for brim Thursday morning. So on a little piece of mullet on a number four long shank bait holder hook. So there you go. Um, 50 pound in the old school. I put it on the scales. Um, so it can happen if you if you're chasing the old Jew down there. And a few of the commercial guys that do it for a living, they reckon that they're down there feeding on the tailor. So that's not a bad bait off the beach too. If you want to put the time in and 
for the most part, they're nocturnal feeders, but at the change of tide. But you can get them as a, as a bycatch there. Um, we regularly do it more often than not on worms during summer, but not, not quite that big. Um, what else has been going on? Nathan's been getting some brim off the northern end of Box Beach and plenty of tail around off the rocks, um, southern end of Box Beach, Boat Harbour, Fisherman's Bay, as well as some drummer around and um, plenty of blackfish still on the main break wall. You've got to put a bit of time in there. They're, um, they're not biting their heads off, but the quality of the fish... Uh, you know, they're in good nick and there's 40 centimetre fish haven't, have been reasonably common, which is a good fish in, in good condition, so um, there you go, it's been a, not a bad week and hopefully we get some boats out this morning, I saw a few guys, guys go out and I guess Al's at the boat show there selling lots of boats Yeah, I'm there, there's no problem you can come down no, no problem, I'll, I'll just put my order in for a, for a I saw some. I saw some, I saw your Facebook thing lots of nice boats there and Old Carl Stefanovic was showing off the $14 million one during the week, so I thought, oh, yeah, right, that's all right. So, you don't know, have to. Shop owners can afford those. No, I don't know. Yeah, not, not, he's not a small business owner. Whoever buys that one. Mate, um, thank, hmm. you, thank you so much for your time this morning, mate. Hey, Blakey. Yeah, stuff salamander bait and tackle salamander way salamander bait. 4982071. Is that what you wanted? Do you yeah, have that on your answering I machine, I mate? <laughs> 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 Bye for now. Bye bye. Matt from Salamander Bait and Tackle will break and we'll be back. Afternoons with Brent Boltitude. The Cabinet's decision to keep or not to keep Dr. Philip Lowe as the uh, Reserve Bank Governor? Let's face it, that's a hell of an error. It's not just a small mistake, it's a beauty. I think when you make a mistake like that and you're in a position like that, you can't expect longevity. Around 60% of Generation Z said they feel more lonely now than they did when COVID restrictions and lockdowns were in place. Brent Boltitude has Sydney talking. With a few simple clicks on the Finance Easy website, you can borrow a serious amount of money without even leaving home. They make Finance Easy, offering a large range of lenders with rates more competitive than the bank. Applying couldn't be easier. Just visit the Finance Easy website, provide a few details, and they'll take care of the rest. Go to financeeasy.com.au or call 1300 003 003. Australian Credit Licence Number 392 182. With Angel Flight, hundreds of needy, seriously ill Australians don't have to spend painful days on the road. Angel Flight pilots fly them there, free of charge, turning miles into minutes. So please, support the work of Angel Flight or get involved as a volunteer pilot or driver and help bring blessed relief to people who so desperately need some. What have you ever seen? Dream comes on steady, hot and strong. It just keeps on and on. Save on hot water energy use by up to 73% with Ream Ambi Heat Heat Pump. Install the Ream. Except nothing less than Australia's best. You wouldn't operate a chainsaw blindfolded. You wouldn't ride your dirt bike blindfolded. And you wouldn't walk on your roof blindfolded. Yet too many people dig without searching before you dig online first. Because if you don't search first, you're digging blind. Avoid high pressure gas mains and high voltage electricity cables every time. Search before you dig online every time and never dig blind. Get ready to elevate your level of freshness with Dan Carter's first ever fragrance, DC 10 Sport. DC 10 Sport is a feel-good citrus fresh scent that uplifts you with every spritz. With top notes of crushed pepper, tonka bean and oak moss, this scent is the perfect balance of strength and sophistication. Get your bottle of DC 10 Sport today and unleash your inner athlete. DC 10 Sport, now available at Chemist Warehouse. Chemist Warehouse, the real house of fragrances. 2SM, Sydney's talking. 2SM, 1269. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go. It is seven minutes away from seven here on High Tide. Almost time to wrap things up. Kieran, it's been a busy one. It has been very, very busy. 
and it's been very informative. I thought that everyone's done a great job, and uh, Greg and Pete, thanks very much for turning up yeah. there this morning. Yeah, thank you guys for, thank for you. coming in this yeah. morning. Good eh? to be back in here. It's been it's 12 good, months yeah. since I've been in the studio. Yeah, you're coming back in tomorrow, aren't you? Well, we'll see what happens tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Reedy? Beer and wings, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember what happened last year when we did beers and wings? We come straight from the venue to here. Okay, they've bailed me. Yasmin, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> if it's okay, I'm going to go home. Yeah, I don't blame you. Been, uh, thank you so much for coming in. And, and I know people say that politicians don't, you know, haven't got that heavier a job. The hours you work mm. when Parliament's in, I know because I dated a politician down in Victoria and they are long days, mm. and for you to come in on, on this morning, well, we really appreciate it. Oh, look, it's been great. Um, you know I love boating, I love fishing. Been at the boat show this week, I'm in the vibe. Um, and it's great to be able to talk about um, Lake Macquarie opening back up again and getting the dredging done. So thanks for having me, guys. And you listen to the show, which we love even more. <laughs> Please thank Ashley from your office. She's a legend. She's such a... She is, and I will. number 11. Listener number 11. We were trying to work out who it was. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cover's broken. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alan, thank you so much for your time this morning. I know you had a pretty big week as well. Oh, that's all right. No problems. I'll talk to you in the morning. <laughs> well, that's good, isn't it? What's that, Kieran? I said that's good. It's been great this morning. It's been a lot of fun. A yeah, lot of fun. A lot of fun. And uh, please, everybody out and about, you guys. If it's going to rain, keep your eye on the sky. It'll tell you. Well, it is supposed to rain. Yeah, so if you're out and about, Montague Island's now south-southeast at 23 knots. Hasn't got to Ulladulla yet, so it's no, coming. It's coming. It is okay. coming. It is on its way. Uh, we'll look forward to catching up with that. Are you going to be on the program tomorrow, Blakey, as well? Is he going to drag yeah, you out of bed again? Give us a call, no problem. You'll have Bertie in there as well, so it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that will be fun. Thanks, guys. Do appreciate your time this morning. Have a good one. Safe boating, everyone. Okay, that is the program for today. Mr. Reed, thank you very much for thank popping you. in and saying hello. We uh, we certainly appreciate it. Great fun. Giving us a fish report. And if people are interested in Pro Lua, how do they go about it's finding? ProLuaAustralia.com.au. Come down the boat show today about 1,400. We'll talk about flathead on surface lures. Too easy, PJ. Yeah, can't go wrong with Pro Lua. Flathead fishing or fishing soft plastics with snapper. Can't the go prawn. wrong. The prawn. <laughs> <laughs> Yasmin, thank you again for your time. We really appreciate it. No trouble at all. That is the program for today. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back tomorrow. Dragonfly knew us like they knew the river bend. But as sure as yabbies bite your toes, this boyhood story had to end.